Uncle Mark. Present. Uh, ma- many of our listeners may not know that we record uh, this show on Sundays, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the morning. Sundays, yeah. But at least for the past couple of weeks, uh, Sunday night has been ladies' night here at the How To Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we dedicated a segment to uh, our heavenly Mormon mother, who we, we are not supposed to talk about or know her name. Yep. She who will not be named. And, yep. Not uh, unlike I, Voldemort. That's Ooh, right. Maybe that's her name. <laughs> her name's Voldemort. Uh, I, Uncle Dan has a follow up with another uh, l- lady segment. Yes, indeed. Wow. Uh, we're, when, we're, it's a streak. It, <clears throat> I. Well, <clears throat> interestingly, this is actually what I started to work on uh, last week for last week's show, but then I, I kind of got sidetracked into the Mormon thing, which I like. Um, but I'm sure a bunch of folks who heard my segment on Heavenly Mother, uh, but came from more mainstream Christian traditions, were snickering to themselves about <laughs> how weird those Mormons are. <laughs> and they're obviously right. But yes. I say that their snootiness is misplaced. They run afoul of the eighth commandment. Thou shalt not decry the blackness of a kettle when thou, pot, are like unto the shade of pitch thyself. <laughs> First, because uh, pretty much every theological belief is just as mind-numbingly stupid as the next, but more importantly, because all Christians have a heavenly mother. Jews, too. Oh, they just were never taught about her. So, well, for today's wow. show, I'm going to dip into the graveyard of the gods and dig up Asherah. Oh. Now, to get to who Asherah is and why I'm making all kinds of crazy claims about her, we have to go back to the very early Bible times and even before that. Uh, as we learned from Uncle Doug when he gave us the Bible story of Joshua in recent episodes, The Israelites weren't the only people in the Middle East back in the day, but if they were, who would be, well, because if they were, who would God tell them to genocide? No, there were, uh, there was that plucky group back then known as the Canaanites. Yeah. Now Canaanites are by far the most frequently mentioned ethnic group in the Bible and were basically the Washington generals to the Israel's (laughs) Harlem Globetrotters. (laughs) And if you don't like that analogy, they were the macho man Ra- Ra- Randy Savage to Israel's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> or, uh, maybe this is much closer to the mark, the Israelites were the English and the Canaanites were any indigenous people on the planet. <laughs> so, did, mach- the did that- macho man Randy Savage, was that his deal? He got beaten up by Hulk all the time? Well, he was, I mean, he was, a, he was the heel and... Uh, yeah. And Hulk was the face. But then remember, and Hulk Hulk turned into the heel for a while. Remember how he crazy did. he that went? Was? He went heel. He was Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yeah, that was crazy, huh? These are wrestling deep cuts, everybody. Let's, Why don't we uh, just talk about that for a let's while? Do that. Let's do just do a wrestling that. show. <laughs> <clears throat> you guys remember Ric Flair? Anyway, um, the, so anyway, uh, the point is that the Canaanites are bad guys, and Israel would just fight them over and over and over. This all started when God freed the Israelites from bondage in Egypt, never happened, and then (laughs) promised them all the Canaanite land as a sort of slavery reparations. Unfortunately, there were people living on that land, so, you know, some dudes gotta die. Mm. Uh, Then the Israelites took over the conquered land, made slaves of the survivors, and they all lived happily ever after as God's chosen people. (laughs) But... Really, what likely happened is that the Israelites lived alongside the Canaanites and may have actually arisen from them. Uh, Mm -hmm. Either way, Canaanite history is inextricably tied to Israelite history. They shared a fuck ton of social and cultural, cultural heritage. And here's where it gets interesting. That heritage includes gods. Now, We've discussed some Canaanite gods before. Way back in episode nine, Uncle Mark, you talked about Baal. Yeah. Uh, To today's evangelical televangelists, Baal is basically a synonym for Satan. Just an evil guy that that evil people worshipped. Yeah. But actually, Baal was just one of the gods of the Canaanite pantheon, and he was no small shakes. Uh, Baal was the son of the head honcho, the big cheese, the Crunchwrap Supreme, L. Now, mm. if the name 
L sounds familiar to you, it may be because it appears all over the Bible. But unlike Baal, L doesn't get labeled as a bad guy. Why? Because at some point along the way, Canaanite El merged with Israelite Yahweh to form Voltron, the most powerful <laughs> god of all. A super group. Yes, indeed. <laughs> like damn Yankees. Right. <laughs> In fact, the Bible seems to turn the name El into just a word that means God. But yeah. there are actually lots of passages where it is not using it that way. The Bible actually references El as a name for a supreme God. But the big invention of the Israelites is monotheism. So if there are two all-powerful gods, they must be the same guy. Mm. Uh, and both names pop up all over the place. Most times, as a matter of fact, if a Bible name ends in L, that name is referring to the God. Mm. Or just or just God, you know, sort of a generically. Like Jor-El uh, or Kal-El. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Holy no, shit, more wait. Like, <laughs> like the universes are crossing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Ezekiel, Raphael, Michael, uh, which is why it's spelled that way, A-E-L. Mm. And of course, Daniel, the, the handsomest of all of the names, are all examples. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Uh, hell, the, the name Israel mm. has L right there in the name. Now, Yahweh appears in names too. In most of the names in the Bible that end in Ah, those are references to Yahweh. So Isaiah, Zechariah, Hezekiah, uh, etc. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Interestingly... One name that ends in awe in the Bible that isn't a Yahweh reference is our friend who you thought I was never going to circle back to, Ashara mm. or Ashera. Now, uh, depending on what mythos you're reading about, Ashera is the queen consort, read royal wife, of the Sumerian god Anu or of El or of Yahweh. Yes, Yahweh seems to have had a wife at some point. Huh. At least for a while. Between the 10th century BCE and the Israelite exile in 586 BCE, Israel was Israel were just as polytheistic as everybody else. Hmm. Uh, it was only after the exile that the idea of a single god started to spread and probably wasn't even universal among the Jews until the time of the Maccabees around the 2nd century BCE. Now... We've talked many times about how even the Bible itself, mostly the Old Testament, uh, for all its thou shalt not, thou shalt have no gods before me talk, has a lot of gods in it. Yeah. And they're not just, you know, the, the silly myth that those guys over there worship. No, many of the stories include the Hebrew God going toe to toe with other gods in a fight and the other gods actually kind of holding their own, which means... That, not, that they not only exist for real, according to the Bible, but they're almost as powerful as Yahweh. Now, even the New Testament has some, some sticky wickets in terms of polytheism. Like, how is Satan not a god? And it keeps talking about a father, a son, and a holy ghost, and all three are divine, which... If you're too obsessed with there being only one God, might lead you to decide something stupid like, yeah, there are three guys, but they're also one guy. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, that theology isn't in the Bible. That's just something that the Catholics came up with later because their brains were on fire. Yes, <laughs> Trinitarianism. It's uh, yeah. it's a it's it's a really smart solution to a non-existent problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's kind of what happened with El and Yahweh. It seems that as the Israelites got bigger and more powerful and started talking in, ta uh, started taking over in the religion, uh, they decided that their guy and the other guy <coughs> were just the same guy. Mm. Uh, it was very much like Christians taking over, but keeping a bunch of the pagan rites and rituals, just claiming they're about Jesus now. So. Okay, fine. It's L just good screenplay Yahweh. writing. I mean, that, that's all it is. What's that? It's just good screenplay writing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if there's one thing we can say about the Bible, it's just <laughs> really smart, tight writing. It's pretty zipped up. Like you really can't find a, you really can't find any kind of, you know, 
Can't poke a hole in that. Not at all. No. So, okay. L is Yahweh now, but L had a wife and a bunch of kids. Mm. And sort of the process of one culture absorbing another one is a very slow, very messy process. So, you know, you, you've got a bunch of people who like their gods and traditions, and this whole monotheism thing took forever. It did not happen overnight. Mm-hmm. The Bible is not the most reliable source for the story of how they moved from polytheism to monotheism, but it does tell that story. Solomon himself built temples to lots of gods, for example, and in the temple he built to Yahweh, he put statues as tributes to Asherah Hmm. because they were married and she was the queen of heaven. Now, we know that he did this because in 2 Kings, Josiah, the self-appointed guardian of monotheism, smashed the Asherahs and then covered the site with human bones for some reason. Well, now, because that was one of the most plentiful things in the Old Testament times. Right. right. What are we going to throw over this? Dirt? No, we got way more bones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just do bones. Uh, one of the worst aspects of monotheism is that the single God you end up with doesn't really represent everybody. When the Jews got rid of all but one God, and that God was a big, tough, vengeful man God, the women no longer had their own God to talk to, which sucks, because as you know, Yahweh was a patriarchal nightmare. Yeah. Uh, what well, was, was and is. Was yeah. and is, continues to be. Uh, and Asherah does seem to be to have been a staple of worship by women, especially in the home, although there is plenty of talk. Uh, there is a biblical, I don't have her written down, there's a biblical queen that worshipped her too. Hmm. Um. So it wasn't just a home thing, it was also the royals. Mm. Um, But archaeological finds uh, in the area indicate that she was pretty common, like super common and a very popular god among the Israelites. Female figurines have been uh, a semi-constant find in ancient sites, which Mm. seems to indicate that Asherah worship was fairly ubiquitous. There were festivals to her where Hebrews would bake small cakes. There were ancient temple sites and shrines where Asherah seems to have been the main object of worship. She was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, Asherah is the only female god attested to in the Bible or in ancient Israel generally, it seems. Um, But the Bible definitely mentions her. Like, kind of a lot. And by wait, name, Asher- by Asherah, by name, yeah, huh? But wait, I hear you saying, I've read the Bible many times. I mean, not you guys, but some people have read the Bible, and I don't remember any mentions of Asherah. True, if you search the King James Bible, you oh. will find zero references to Asherah. Ah, that's interesting. because the King James translation isn't a translation of an original text, it is a translation of of several translations. It has gone from the original Hebrew to Greek to Latin to Pig Latin. And (laughs) just like running the text through Google Translate several times, some of the words got messed up. To Esperanto. Right, exactly. To To Jawa. (laughs) Jawa. In some instances, Asherah got rendered by the Greeks to their word meaning grove or trees, which uh, made it into the Vulgate Latin as a grove or wood. Uh, and that may, have, uh, may have, that may have made sense to some scholars because Asherah was often associated with trees and wood. Hmm. Her image was often carved in wood, and her icons were placed under trees. But the, despite some translations cutting her out completely, Asherah ap- appears in the Bible 40 times. Holy shit. She was a big deal. Of course, the Bible being the Bible, most of the mentions of her are of wicked people worshiping her (laughs) and righteous, valiant heroes destroying everything having to do with her. But there she is. Yeah. And that's the thing. When you read the Bible as a believer, you you, you, you cheer when God rages and commands his servants to go destroy the shrines to other gods. You revel in the massacres and the looting and the pillaging 
because the looters are the are the good guys. But when you read it from the perspective of, you know, reality, that is, all the gods are fake and these guys are just bullies for no good reason, the stories take on a different meaning. Mm. So when I read Jeremiah chapter 44, for example, I don't read a story about a noble servant of, one of, of, of the one true God in a holy crusade to please save the world by stopping people from worshiping false gods, I read about a fanatic who has lost his damned mind and is wrecking people's lives. Mm. Now, the chapter starts with God pointing out that he, God, has totally wrecked Jerusalem and all the towns of Judah. Like, the cities are demolished, and what's left of the people are fixing to move to Egypt to get away from the wreckage. <laughs> God told Jeremiah that those people would not live to come back to Judah if they didn't get rid of all their other religious practices, and Jeremiah passes that message along. Now, here's the thing. When you have the choice between worshiping a nice God and worshiping a God who literally just decimated your people and destroyed your homeland, it's not an awesome choice. Yeah. <laughs> you defini you're definitely terrified of Yahweh, but who wants to worship a crazed tyrant? Well, half of Americans do, but yeah. that's a comparison for another time. <laughs> so it's, uh, there, is, there is precedent. Right, yeah. Right. It, it, it seems a lot less unlikely right now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, here's how the people responded to Jeremiah when he told them they should worship Yahweh. <clears throat> this, is, this is a quote from Jeremiah 44. Is that what I said? 44, yeah. Uh, then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to other gods, along with all the women who were present, a large assembly, and all the people living in Lower and Upper Egypt said to Jeremiah, we will not listen to the message you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord. We will certainly do everything we said we would. We will burn incense to the queen of heaven and Ooh. we'll pour out drink offerings to her just as we and our ancestors, uh, our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. At that time, we had plenty of food and were well off and suffered no harm. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing and have been perishing by the sword and famine. And the women added, we burned our incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings to her and did not our husband, oh, sorry, when we burned out the incense and poured out the drink offerings to her, did not our husbands know that we were making cakes impressed with her image and pouring out drink offerings to her? But therein lies the problem. Did mm. you catch it? When they worship a lady god, the women had some power. Mm. <laughs> there was a measure of equity and equality there. The women were just as important <coughs> in the worship as the men. Heaven nope. had a queen, for God's sake. <laughs> nope. Can't have that. Nope. So obviously that had to go even though everything was better when they worshipped her, <laughs> according to the Bible. <laughs> but they still had to get rid of her. The theme, might, might, might makes right and no girls allowed. You know, now, of, what? I, this is fascinating. I, 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 this reminds me of when you read in Numbers that there are instructions on how to perform an abortion. Yup. This is that kind of shattering to, you know, I, yeah. I've, we've read the Bible together so much in the context of the show. It still astonishes me that what's actually in the freaking book. Yeah, how do you yeah. just gloss over the fact that the the Bible mentions a queen of heaven? Yeah, favorably. Yeah, <clears throat> just gloss over it, just move right through it. Um, now, of course, because Asherah was female, they couldn't just have their god defeat her. Even gods aren't supposed to beat up women, apparently. So... They went ahead and did the next best thing. They changed her story. They followed the standard handbook, handbook for discrediting a woman, which told them exactly what to do. Any guesses, fellas? Hmm. Uh, I'm sure it involves high, velo high velocity rocks. <laughs> nope, nope. They labeled her a sex goddess and painted her worshipers as prostitutes. Oh, uh, oh okay. <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic move. <laughs> Classic. Works, ev God, works every time. Amazing how little things change. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Isn't it? Jeez. So, Slut. 
right? That's it. Exactly. Jesus they slut shamed her and yes. sent her to the uh, the oblivion. So using only the powers of gentle persuasion, diplomatic reasoning, slander, and mass murder on a genocidal scale, <laughs> the God of Israel got the divorce he apparently deeply desired, and Asherah has disappeared back into the graveyard of the gods. Oh. Yeah, well, I, I, we, you know, every time we, we, not every time, but most of the times we talk about the Bible, we always hit upon these little hidden pockets of polytheism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're right? not hidden. That's the thing. They're just right out there in the open for all the world to see. Well, yeah. it's funny, too, because, you know, I, I, in thinking about ever debating a, 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 you know, an evangelical or something like that again, I always try and kind of keep in the back of my mind, like, remember this thing. It's crazy. Like, remember that p- part in numbers that talks about how to perform an abortion. Or right. now it's like, remember, you know, to talk about the queen of heaven. At some point, it's like, look, I'm just going to throw the whole book at you. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Read this book for real. And then sit down and, and, talk and read to it. Yeah, God and I think it's, it's also important to acknowledge that we're not really making a value judgment about whether polytheism is better or worse than monotheism. Right. Yeah. It's just that the claim is that, you know, every Christian sex claim is that they are monotheist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, the Jews claim they're monotheist and, and you know, most kind of hilariously, the Catholics. Well, they're not. Right. Yeah. Why, why don't you get rid of that book then? Like, right. If and like I say, even if the Christians get rid of the Old Testament, which they one thousand percent should do, yeah, they still have a polytheism problem. Well, that's the thing is, like from our perspective, what does it matter to us if you have an invisible friend or a bunch of invisible friends? Right. You know what I mean? What's the big deal? Yeah, I don't. I like. I don't. Again, I don't give a shit. Like, what's? (laughs) But your claim is that you're a monotheist, and you're just not. (laughs) No. No. So there you go. Queen of heaven. <sighs> there you God's go. wife. You learn God's something wife. new every day. Yep. All right. Well, with that, let's move on. 